Hi guys, Big Mon D here, and today I want to show you how to use your FTP space, uh, whatever hosting space you've got on a server, um, and make it a lot easier. Uh, since things like Dropbox and Google Drive and all this stuff where you can just save files to your computer and it will automatically be put on the cloud, uh, since stuff like that has become popular, uh, a lot of people haven't bothered using FTP these days because it's a little bit clunky, a little bit awkward. Yeah, it does the same job, but it's it's a little bit clunkier. So what this does is it basically does the same thing as like your things like Google Drive and Dropbox. It will give you a folder on your computer that will automatically be synced with your storage space on on the internet uh, on whatever web server you want to put the details in for. So uh, there's quite a few different programs like this. This is like pretty much the first one that comes up on Google. Uh, and when you type in uh, sort of cloud storage FTP, uh, it uses the secure SFTP if if you want it to. It can use insecure, whatever you like. They're a little bit more. They're a lot more flexible stuff like this than um, Dropbox, Google Drive stuff like that. Dropbox and Google Drive have got a limit on them unless you pay. Uh, I already have uh, web hosting my own web hosting service so it gives me I've got like terabytes of space already just sitting there uh, I know a lot of people have got some free hosting space with whatever like 25 gig 50 whatever so I'm going to show you how to set this up it's relatively straightforward uh, first off you want to click the download button and save the file click enough and we'll open the file Standard installation guide, just click next. It'll ask you where you want to install it. Do you want it for everyone or just me? Just me will do. I'm the only one who uses this computer. Uh, do you want to make changes to your PC? Yes. And that's it, it's installed. Now, no configuration there. It um, that's it, it's it's installed. So next step, we want to open it up. We find it on our start menu. FTP box. And the first time you run it, it's going to give you this this wizard. It's like, uh, you know, how do we connect? So, uh, connection details. Now, if you've got your own web server, you've got anything you connect by FTP to or or whatever, you'll, it's basically the same login detail. So, I connect by SFTP. Uh, I'm going to use uh, my test server. Not, my test server for for this one, which is that uh, admin DM. So there we go. Now you can set it to always ask for password. If you have any sort of uh, sensitive files on there, like I do, that might be a good idea. So then it will ask you for the password every time you use it. Uh, I'm going to skip that for now because I'm going to come back and change where, they, where I use this for later. I just want to show you the, how it's used. It will ask you about an RSA fingerprint. Now, if you don't know what an RSA fingerprint is, it's basically uh, sort of a long number that identifies the server you're connecting to. Uh, in most cases, if you've got your connection details right, they'll be right. Usually, if you're connecting with the correct login details, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be the right fingerprint. Now I'm using a local server on my local network, so uh, it, <laughs> error message is timed out, right? Okay. So I'm using a local connection, so I don't need to worry about it being the wrong server. So you'll have to press yes on that. Okay, so it's gonna give you this default folder. Now if you're connecting to multiple uh, multiple different uh, different servers, different FTP services, it might be worth you using the default because if, as you can see the default puts it in your document folder under FTP box and then it's username at server address. Uh, I don't want that, I want this to function just like Dropbox and Google Drive do so I'm gonna select the, I want to select local folder, browse and I'm gonna go to library, no I'm gonna go Let's put it 
I have, let's put this PC, D drive. I have all my users' files on my D drive. So users, big mon, uh, new folder, and we'll call this FTP box. This can be anywhere on your hard drive you like. So FTP box, OK. So there we are, D drive, users, big mon, FTP box. Uh, for most of you, it will be C drive, users, then your username, FTP box, if you want to put it the same place I have. Uh, as you probably noticed, it was alongside my Google Drive and Dropbox. So then we hit next. We say, uh, it's now going to say, which folder in your FTP space do you want to use? Now, in my case, uh, this admin DM folder represents all the files I have access to on the server, anything above that is sort of the server files. It's because I have server admin on the server. In a lot of cases, you'll just see an empty folder here and you can select the, the sort of root. If that, if all you see is that slash, then that's the one you want to select. But I'm going to select my user, my username. Uh, okay, do I want to synchronize all files or select what will be synchronized? Well, I want everything. So we just hit done. And then we'll get this come up. It's really important you have a look through these settings because by default it will only synchronize manually. Uh, okay, so we will most likely want to start on system startup. And we will want to go to, we're going to make sure on account that it's set to run both ways. Uh, if you want to, you can get it to not show you dot files. Dot files are Linux's version of hidden files. I'll show you those in a moment. Uh, bandwidth. This is the important one. You want to tell it to check automatically every 10 seconds. And there's no save here. Once you set it, that's it. It's done. There's no press OK, whatever. You just close it. And we will open that folder. Uh, so we'll go to D drive, users, big man FTP box. Now if we want to, we can just close that. We have the FTP box icon down here. Uh, we can just click on that, double click that, sorry, and it will open the folder. So you notice this is empty at the moment. When you first set it up, it's going to take a little it's not going to start syncing immediately. So we'll, we'll tell it to start syncing. And there we see all my all my files uh, showing up. And you notice there's quite a lot of dot files in this. And we just quickly switch to uh, this. This is Fire FTP. This is what you would usually use to access something, uh, something like this. And this is basically what it should be showing. Plus there are some dot files. The dot files are hidden. I have Fire FTP set up not to show hidden files, so it's not showing them. Because FTP box is set to show them, then it's showing me all these hidden files. But if you look carefully, bin, requests, and mbox are the only ones that aren't dot files, and they're the ones showing up here. So just to make sure this is working, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file within Windows. I'm going to call it upload test dot text. Now I know Fire FTP will pretty much instantly put the files on my web server if I put files in through through Fire FTP uh, because I've, I've been connected to my server by the command line and checked it and it's pretty much instant. So I'm gonna so we created that upload test. We're also going to create a file on here called download test. Uh, txt. So, via FTP, uh, you see we get this little message that it's updated everything. If you've got a lot of files to download, it will take a long time before it actually starts syncing the new files you put in. It will prioritize files, you see the download test is already there. It will prioritize the, the files you put in last after the ones that already existed before. So if you've already got a list of stuff to download, it'll do that first usually. So it will be a little slow if you've got a lot of stuff to download in the first place, but once it's synced, it'll be fine. 
So, uh, Fire FTP doesn't update automatically, so we'll refresh it, and upload test is there. So, and if I delete both of these from here, now this will be pretty much instant, but Windows doesn't do it instantly. Well, there's sort of a, as, as you probably noticed, I've got a 10 second delay on it, so we see how long it takes to actually update between Fire FTP and Windows, which is about 20 seconds. It's 25. Hopefully it won't take too long. So we can set it to um, to be faster than this, but file created download test text. No, you did that ages ago. See so you know what I mean about when you first set it up, it's a little bit slow to sort of catch up with itself. It's only just realized it's created that file on the server. Let's just refresh this. Okay, well, we're coming up to nearly a minute now. Once you once it's got settled in and it's finished synchronizing and checking all the files, it's faster, but when you first install it, it will take a little while to check through everything. A one minute twenty. Are we still sinking? Yes, we are. So it's about a minute and a half. Hopefully, this won't take too long. We're going to have to cut the video down. It is currently checking through the files on the server, syncing at the moment. To be fair to it, you're not usually going to be logged into an FTP client and this. What you're usually going to do is use this. For, for, oh, there we go, they've gone. So it's just over two minutes. Although, to be fair to it, it was busy checking through all the files I'd already got on there. Uh, but, but yeah, um, you're not going to be using this and your FTP at the same time. Usually what you're going to do is you're just going to open this folder on Windows, do whatever you're working on, and then be happy in the knowledge that's automatically backed up for you. Easy enough. Um, so that's it. Easy enough. Uh, it's set to restart with Windows now. So I can put my important files in here and just forget about them. So hope you found it useful guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.